evening uh, namaste and welcome uh, this is namaste a very very special uh, kind of podcast because we, one we are going to be talking about a movie that you know that we were just discussing a few minutes ago that has not the kind of uh, experience that people have had in the last 20 minutes of the movie it's not something that people have experienced before and we are not sure if something like that can be recreated as well you know that is mm. so the uh, large uh, focus of this uh, discussion i have both uh, shri guru rohit arya as well as rajesh shiva who are, who are i can't think of better people who can speak on this uh, this one uh, is going to be on that uh, section of the movie and also in terms of what it uh, and maybe we could also focus on a few aspects of what this movie has meant to several people including the uh, the hindu uh, community itself and uh, we were just discussing that maybe we'll do it for 90 minutes there have been a few questions that have come in through whatsapp through uh, messenger through uh, comment box and all of that so some of them uh, you know roughly about 5 to 6 questions maybe we could also uh, start by addressing them towards the end or slip it in when we think it's uh, mm. contextually relevant that's up so to you ramesh whenever start. you think the question is relevant you please yeah. introduce it into the conversation Right. how we'll keep it for the i would like to yeah i would like to start by just asking uh, both of you uh, maybe you start with uh, rohit arya ji in terms of uh, what this why why this movie has actually uh, you know made the kind of impact it has because not not all movies make this and and what is in it that has uh, brought it up and then maybe rajesh ji also can touch upon the same thing and then we'll build from there on namaste to all जय श्री राम जय श्री राम जय श्री राम सो आई हैव अ लॉन्गर आंसर टू व्हाट इज गोइंग ऑन विद द मूवी बट द शॉर्ट आंसर इज इट इज डिवाइन इंटरवेंशन या दिस इज अ मूवी दैट इज नॉट ए नॉर्मल इट्स नॉट अ नॉर्मल मूवी इट इज अ मिथिक आर्किटाइपल मूवी so there is something there are forces much are larger at larger at echo there are forces much larger at play than this is problematic problematic should i just uh, take yeah actually i can hear you quite clearly without an echo but i don't know if others no, there's the an echo on this side i can I get, I'm getting the echo as well. Yeah, maybe without that it will help. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but now, now I, I think you are muted now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So no doubt it is a very well made movie. Oh dear, this is really problematic. It keeps. Um, I'll leave the studio and log back in. Rajshri, till then you. I think go. there's a setting option down there. If you click on it, there is uh, in the audio. There's an option of you know uh, echo cancellation. Maybe it that's... is already on. The echo cancellation that's is already on. Echo okay. cancellation is already on. Already are just my. It's already on. I have echo no cancellation. clue. yeah so there is some problem should i use stereo audio then no stereo audio is not right we'll we'll deal with it if it is a problem it is a problem no this i'll i'll leave okay i'll, I'll just i'll mute. log back yeah i'll log back you carry on i'll leave let the me, studio let me mute from my side while you are speaking let's see if that makes a difference okay yes okay. that could be it yeah mm. is that better i think they saying it's fine now okay so that could be it that could be the reason okay, why that could be the reason why no so it's the same problem here it's still coming so uh, what what do we lose i'll just leave and come back i'll okay. just leave and yeah okay kya rajesh i think the, you maybe want to touch upon the same thing right uh so before uh, obviously when i first went to see the movie i had some basic idea that it would be uh, you know the kind of uh, what exactly i was expecting what exactly? i had some basic idea because 
there were people writing about it and everybody was speaking uh the first time when i saw the movie uh, perhaps it was a packed hall at that moment uh when i was coming out of the theater that is when it struck me that okay. the last 20 minutes um, it is not exactly in what we call an acting this is something where he has immersed himself so powerfully into that role that there is no actor here this is a uh, something more like a uh, so i i was just you know telling ramesh about my experience with the movie welcome back mm. so it's when i was stepping out of the theater then i felt that is when it struck me very clearly and powerfully that this last uh, few scenes was not at all an acting it was it was almost like an act of being possessed by the divine of the of the deity who was being portrayed in the movie and uh to make sure that i have got this clearly i went back another day on a morning show that to on a monday morning show there were hardly two or three people in the theater and it was a wonderful experience and it reinforced the belief that what happened in the last few uh moments of the movie uh, this you cannot act it's like either you have to enter it's it's like you know sometimes i tell people uh, on a parallel context suppose uh people speak of advaita and they speak of uh, you know the silencing of the mind they speak of nirvana etc so uh, that is like a state either you are in it or you are not in it if you're not in it you can write volumes about it but you will not know that so it's something uh, the difference is that if you enter your perspective about it uh, what you feel is absolutely different this case what uh, the actor director what what he went through in the last 20 minutes or minutes of the movie when he's when <clears throat> when there's an avasham of the um, of the deity and he you know we know what happens in the screen uh, that is precisely that kind of a zone he is not even trying it's not something that if you ask him let's put it this way if you remake the movie then you know if you ask him that can you do that once again there's no guarantee that he'll be able to do it there's no guarantee that he'll be able to go into that state immediately there is clearly as rohit ji mentioned there's very clearly uh, the simplest answer is that there is some divine intervention and we find uh, even more evidence and support for that when we see that he had to go through a serious amount of preparation before he actually was able to do that scene he gave up eating uh, you know the non vegetarian food for some days because that's the protocol for that sadhana uh, in during the shooting of that scenes he was actually surviving on coconut water and uh, <clears throat> and prasadam that was given to him before and after the scenes it's very interesting here uh, just as a tangent that he was surviving on coconut water because coconut water is so here is a deity who is being portrayed as somebody who is extremely fierce to whom bali can be given if you if you if you have gone through the movie you'll see that uh, very casually he mentions that you know to this deva if you just ek murga ka bali de do to kaam ban jayega something it's not the exact dialogue but something like that so a deity who can take bali is also a deity who is comfortable with taking um, uh, what in the tantric parlance is parlance is known as giving of uh, you know sanctified alcohol and an anukalpa for alcohol is coconut water by the way if those who are you know averse to using alcohol they use coconut water so i find it very interesting that he had to survive on coconut water for the 5 6 days of that last uh, you know days when he was shooting this so this kind of a preparation is almost as if uh, man forget the movie if you have to do a sadhana of a deity that is how you prepare yourself so i completely believe that what happened in the last few moments is uh it's it's a translation of a divine power of that specific deity through those scenes and it is it is um, it is this which is capturing people i mean it is a movie made in a rural uh, i mean uh, sorry uh, not rural perhaps but uh, a re- very regional setting of a very regional uh, religious practice within the broad sanatan dharma umbrella and that is causing people in far off places like bihar and up in villages to suddenly when those scenes come up you know uh, you you uh, you remove your slippers and you fold your hands and you are awestruck it's like the presence of the divine this humanly cannot be done it's either there or it's it's something else that is working here and that is what has caused the movie to become what it is today yeah and just to add to what uh, rajesh was saying i think two things also that uh, rishab uh, mentioned twice is that uh, the the fact that uh, he felt right from the beginning that when he decided to start this movie that uh, you know he felt some kind of a power that was guiding him and uh, yes. he said you know i 
constantly felt the presence and he also said that uh, you know the energy that entered me he said it so clearly uh, also got transferred onto the screen something like that yes. I mean, to just to add and i would like to again pass it on to rohit ji again for the same uh, first question see, see i'll be very clear what very happened very clear what... Uh, i think you guys mute yourself and we'll see if this is working yeah what happened was out of the norm it was you see we are afraid to use these words supernatural extraordinary words like that uh, you know we we are a mystical and occult religion and those two words have been so demeaned that nobody dares to any more say that Uh, there are things beyond your rational mind there are things beyond this is supra rational this is not irrational it is supra rational it transcends reason you know and uh, the whole of hinduism is a uh, uh, you know we are like a liminal religion we are between stages of consciousness we are between dimensions and what rishab has done i don't even know who he is but he is obviously a person with some kind of blessings because he has managed to open up that crack between dimensions even if it is only for 4 minutes he has managed to give us a glimpse into that other dimension where there are beings divine beings beings who do not follow our diabetic notions of what is good and bad beings who are extraordinarily powerful beings who are uh, rothful beings who are protectors you know there is a whole dimension which was all taken for granted in our culture and today we are so hopelessly explaining matters that we are explaining our religion itself into into uh, extinction this desire to over explain matters and make everything scientific you know like this is not a scientific phenomenon what what are you talking about and it all comes from inferiority complex let me be very clear about that you know this this whole notion of trying to explain as a way of life as a philosophy we all know the great philosopher socrates what socrates became a great philosopher because the oracle at delphi or delphi said that socrates is the wisest man in greece okay wonderful what happened is the oracle at delphi alive today it is now a tourist spot and socrates has been subsumed into the western culture there is no more greek paganism anymore and we are well on that path by by demeaning these kind of rituals by demeaning these kind of devas these kind of practices and calling it like some filmmaker with a pimple on the ass of culture he said that this is a what did he call it he called it superstition he said this is an insult to intelligence are tujh mein kya intelligence hai yaar keda you don't have you know he is cognitively crippled he does not have the bandwidth to experience an occult phenomena that is a matter of sympathy mm. it is not a matter of intelligence you know he is a crippled person he is a handicapped person he cannot experience mystical and occult dimensions that's his problem not ours and we have been too too much into this reformist we are, yeah somebody has quoted me also he famously said hinduism is the last surviving pagan culture absolutely we cannot we cannot end up with this vedanta being subsumed into the larger this thing and there are no more uh, yeah. rituals like this there are no more pujas like this you know so in one sense i find this fascinating i find this movie and i find rrr and you know this year something has shifted in consciousness i'll get into that a little bit later but in terms of what happened you cannot rationally explain it you should not even try yes it comes from another dimension altogether and if you don't believe there are other dimensions then again i say i pity you from the bottom of my heart because you are a fool we have been aware of these things for 6000 years in this culture and i am not going to allow 
this kind of rituals, this kind of shetrams to become like the oracle at Delphi. I'm not going to allow that to become, and all of us should be very firm about that. Our sacred spaces will not be converted into tourist attractions. Our sacred spaces will remain alive. Otherwise, we are also headed the same way. Shankaracharya is going to be another Socrates, you know. And all the Devi temples who validated him, all the Devi temples who gave him Shakti, they will be like pushed aside. So there is something fascinating in how he has brought what is regarded as primitive and ancient right into the center of consciousness. And I find that remarkable. I find that to be nothing short of a miracle, actually. It is miraculous. Yeah. 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 And uh, before we actually went live, you know, Rajesh and I, we, we were conversing on this. And, you know, in, in one sense, uh, we had something that was similar. Uh, for example, the effect that the movie, that the last 20 minutes had was actually greater the next day for me. So yes. I did not, uh, rather she actually went the, you know, once more to validate, uh, I don't know, if it was to validate or to re-experience. But re -experience what happened is the right term. The volume the was so much, I couldn't risk my hearing, you know. Otherwise, I would ah. have gone. And, I'll wait and see it and again. Exactly on. like, uh, exactly like Rohit ji is saying, I, I'm, I find it difficult to explain what it is, but it's like, some sort of within you there is a there is, there is a change that has come over you something like you yourself have been possessed or something and yes and i and yes. i'm saying anybody with even a iota of sensitivity to, to matters such as this would be and like you said if there is absolutely zero uh, zero effort that has been made and the all the attempts is only to reject all of these things then obviously you will feel nothing yeah right. oh, and let me just add one. Yeah, please continue, ah. Rajesh. I'll make my point later. Yeah, yeah. Just, just one point to one thing to what Rohitji beautifully said. So in Europe, what they have done, these people, I was just uh, going over in a conversation with a friend some time ago. Uh, so they have taken these great philosophers, uh, Socrates and whatever else came in, and they have divorced it from the deities who inspired these philosophies. So there is the mystical occult, and then there is the, uh, you know, the rationalization of that, or you systematization, not even rationalization. Rationalization gives a wrong understanding of it. No, we are systematizing the raw knowledge into something that is more useful for society for generations to come. And this is what exactly is the grammar of all rituals are. So there are the deities, and there is me. What Sanatana Dharma does is that it gives me a set of rituals. How do I interact with that tremendous power? which is not uh, not at all human, which is way beyond the earth, which will perhaps survive even if the earth were to be destroyed. So this, what in Europe, what they have done is they have completely cut off those deities, um, you know, the original sources, etc., and just taken the philosophers, uh, just cherry pick them suddenly and then assume that apne dimag se ye sab cheez nikal gaya. Nee, it doesn't they work made, that way. They made Greek and Latin into a Christian. Yes. You know, they, yes. they removed the... They made that into part of the Western cultural Western, heritage. Yes, yes. You know, and so that is that is actually that is a death of the culture. I mean, that is why there has never been after that reintroduction of those uh, great philosophers into their culture without the power of the deities. They have, uh, I doubt whether they have been able to produce another uh, original thinking philosopher of that caliber. In fact, Thank what you. yeah, we, what passes off as Western philosophy later on is bits and pieces from taken from India, a bit of the Buddhist, this, that, and repackaged in other terminologies. Uh, I'm not going into the details of that, but there was an original force in the uh, philosophers of ancient, uh, uh, you know, of Greece when before uh, the advent of uh, monotheism and all that. And this uh, entirely, in my opinion, is always inspired by the divine, inspired by the deities that they worship. And without acknowledging that, without having the rituals for them, without bringing that force into our uh, ordinary consciousness as a as a very standard way of looking at reality, you are never going to be able to recreate that thing. Same way, this is where this movie excels because it provides no justification. Not one scene is there where he's trying and laboring to actually put some kind of rationalization and this and that. I remember that um, they, they had a there was a movie uh, that came out uh, that was also a remake into Hindi from a South, in, um, South movie where uh, there's this girl who gets possessed. And uh, uh, I think Vidyavalan was there. Uh, 
uh, I don't uh, recall the name of the movie. So she she gets possessed in a house, and then there's Akshay Kumar and all that. So there, I remember a scene uh, at the end. They are trying to remove their possession. They get some uh, you know some um, uh, uh, tantrupasak and somebody and all that. So that tantrupasak after doing the ritual, he is going into elaborate descriptions of psychology and this and that and all sorts of nonsense because there is an innate you know shyness to say that boss, this is what it is. Iske bich aur koi reason hai nahi. Either that you believe it or you don't. Movie was originally made in Malayalam, which is what capital of India, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that that is why <laughs> I, I, I appreciate Trishab Shetty because he didn't go into all that in this movie. Nothing, absolutely no, you know, nonsensical rationalizations and all that stupidity. Shall I say it is the most rooted in culture? I made a yes. post and I said you can see the roots growing out of there. Yes. They are so completely. They are not deracinated. You know the problem with Bollywood or Bollywood, as I call it, B A W D Y, Bollywood. <laughs> they they write their scripts and the dialogues in English. So what do you expect? S <laughs> S so, Rajamouli, Rishabh Shetty, they speak their mother tongue. Right. Work in their mother tongue. Mm-hmm. They are still rooted. The minute you forget how to function in your mother tongue. Mm. You are dead. Mm. You know, at least in India. You know, at least mm. in India, this this being a sort of third class Gora imitation is the the highest uh, this thing desire in people. I find that absurd. And this movie is so uh, like proudly rooted in its nativeness. You know, like this is who we are. You know, and like like he said, they have no explanation for it, no justification for it, no rationalization for it. This is who we are. This is our God. This is our forest. This is what we do. And uh, you know, you don't like it too bad for you. And that also is yeah. a big thing. That also is a big thing in in the shift in the culture. For the first time, you see, in '65 they made guide. There is something very significant in guide which people don't realize. The pundits of the village try to catch hold of Devanand and question him on Sanskrit, and he replies in English, and they are abashed and cowed, and all the local people laugh. And so, you know, in the popular culture, knowledge of English was regarded as greater than knowledge of Sanskrit. You know, and that has been pumped into our blood and poisoning us. But now, for the first time, we have. Like I don't even recall that there is any overuse of English in the movie or any such thing like mm. that. You know, like it is. A, and uh, those who know Canada have told me that the double meaning dialogues are at another level. You know, which is like. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's completely. I mean the use of. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, and. Uh, there is an element of genius. I mean, when when you mentioned that when right at the beginning. uh you know the 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 the, uh, the the guy the antagonist the villain he say he asks uh, who is speaking is it the uh, dancer wearing the uh, garb of the De- deva or is it the deva speaking and he gives a and he sets the context clearly when he says in in uh, actually in kannada he says it very beautifully he says if you if it is the uh, if it is the dancer who is acting not speaking he says he says the dance, dancer it is acting then we shall meet again if it is the deva who has uh, who is now speaking then i shall disappear from here and we will mm. not see again i mean that is such an important uh, contextually uh, relevant uh, portion where there is no apology you know like mm. in uh, i think rajesh was referring to chandramukhi i think that was the movie where you know they bring all that uh, psycho jumbo uh, bumbo jumbo yeah movie. yeah all this no yeah, whole psycho babble that is the thing <laughs> so hilarious mm. no that is directly from the original malayalam where again mm. there is a tantric mm. who also <laughs> happens to be a phd from harvard and some stuff like that so <laughs> <laughs> so you know uh, one question yeah. yeah no no please yeah, there is one question that came up i thought which was uh, relevant here mm. uh, I, i think the uh, in the it, it is uh, you know the, the people asking is avesha in possession mm. Hmm. uh seen only by uh, these bhutas grama devatas or can even ishta devatas or so called you know higher uh, uh, devatas also possess someone is there an element of yogyata or adhikara that is required uh, in order for the possession to take place 
Raishri is the best person for that answer. Yeah. Oh, best or not, I don't know, but I'll. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, you are the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are the best. I mean, uh, no question about it. So, if possession, so there are, see, uh, first of all, we have to understand that uh, what uh, the idea of possession has been completely, the understanding of the term possession has been completely twisted because of uh, tremendous influence of the Western Abrahamic, we specifically Christian cultures. Avesham. Yes, Avesham. Let's use the term Avesham. Avesham. Yeah. Exactly. Because possession. Term. By yeah. default indicates you'll remember 10 Hollywood uh, ghost movies and all that, and that's got nothing to do with this. Uh, so actually, Avesham, being possessed by the divine of a Devata, is a very ancient concept and runs completely parallel and absolutely important, integral part of Sanatana Dharma. Let's put it this way. It is not even, a lot of people are there who will say that, you know, uh, who are more of the theoretically... Uh, learned kinds who have a lot of uh, doctrinal knowledge of things and perhaps not so much of the experience who believe that uh, Avesham and things are only done in villages and thoda sa idhar udhar hota, it's not too uh, serious and one thing is there Avesham kind of thing happens across India it is not confined only to Karnataka by the way you find in Maharashtra they call it Angat there is I have seen people getting you know uh, the possess possessed by the goddess to some degree uh, in Bengal, we call it bhorhoa. Bhorhoa means as if something is, you know, entering into you. And uh, especially if you go into the uh, sub-Himalayan regions in the uh, hill, hilly regions, etc., below the Himalayas, it's almost every second village will have some of the other uh, priest who gets possessed by some uh, devata of the, you know, of the of that specific village, and he acts as an oracle, and he uh, uh, the avesham of that happens. In fact. I had gone once to a, a, a temple in on the border of Garhwal and uh, Himachal. And uh, there they had the specific festival that used to happen where the priest would have an avesham of Duryodhana, of all people. Okay, And they believed actually that for some period of time Duryodhana had ruled there. And uh, for that span of time when he ruled there, he was a very just, fair king. So during the time when the priest has the avesham of Duryodhana, uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, everybody in the village comes there, whatever problems are there, and he gives them advice and he solves their uh, matters. And it is the similar pattern that you find across India. Now, this is neither a new phenomenon, nor is it something, a fringe phenomenon. We find Avesham right into the Mahabharata itself. And in fact, if you, there are scholars who have gone more deeper into the study, there are specific language that is used. Okay, so Avesham means basically an invitation of a more powerful divine entity that enters into your mind and body at that time and uplifts you. Whereas there is a possibility that something negative can also come and downgrade you. So how do we know which is uh, which is something uh, more something to look forward to as opposed to something uh, which we colloquially call you know uh, getting koi bhut pret agya etc. Things like that. It's very simply by what happens as a consequence of it. If uh, if an avesham, in fact, the in fact there was a very interesting um, analysis that was done. So they in old texts they used to have uh, a wide range of terms they use for it. Sometimes uh, terms like pravesh, pravesh was more considered as some kind of an infringement, which is that you are not calling on the entity, but the entity forcibly enters into you. This is something that happens with respect to uh, pretas, bhutas, and things like that. Uh, eventually, it leads to a complete debilitation of the mental, physical, psychological condition of the individual and things around. So more or less, you know that this is going in a negative direction. So you know that it is not something positive. On the other hand, the avesham of something more powerful of a deity or uh, even if it's either of the you know the great gods, which we consider devatas or any of the beings, ethereal beings who are there, uh, is going to produce something, always a superlative result. Like in this case, for example. So what happens? There are people who are trying to come and attack the village, uh, unjustly take away their land, things like that, and they are killing the villagers. And suddenly there is an avesham of a deity who is a protector of the village, a Shitrapala, Gulika Deva. He comes into the uh, body of uh, the protagonist and uh, we see what happens. So this end result is that there is a victory for the people who have been worshipping that deity. So this is very typically of what is known as a positive influence of avesham. So we find, uh, taking more into this, we in the Mahabharata, we find uh, that episode, one of the most famous episodes where Ashwatthama is going to take revenge on the, you know, on the Pandava camp. And suddenly he sees there's a great uh, Bhuta standing. 
and warriors of that era were you know of that kind they would not run away seeing a bhuta so he picks up his weapon and starts fighting and the bhuta also keeps fighting and he soon realizes that every weapon that is throwing at the bhuta is not able to uh, you know subdue it and then it strikes him that perhaps this is not a normal spirit this is shiva himself because he's the lord of bhutas okay who has come down so he immediately drops his weapons bows down in reverence and shiva at the time has an avesham into him enters into him so why does this happen because shiva is ultimately the lord of destruction all that wherever there is any destruction or any change that is happening in the momentum of things as it is going it has to be some blessing of shiva that comes in and ashwatthama himself was born through a blessing of shiva by the way so he has an avesham of shiva and in that state he goes and causes the massacre in the camp it's a different matter that other people you know whom he intended was not there and all that thing is there but uh, this is a very uh, so when it comes in the mahabharata it is a very acceptable notion they are not even trying to you know there is no uh, that okay this is a fringe thing and we are talking about classical heroes here and we are talking about the great arya so we don't get avesham no it's very simply and very normally mentioned there uh, not not only that before the mahabharata war there are episodes where duryodhana is told by the rakshasas that don't worry about anything you enter the battlefield the asuras the danavas the rakshasas will possess the bodies of all the kaurava warriors and they will be the one fighting you are only just a you know a nimitta so uh, these are very standard ideas that was there now if you go even more further even deeper so take for example the rudram i'm just giving taking rudram as one example because it comes from the vedas but you this applies to you will see that this applies to all the upasana paddhatis so the moment you start the rudram before that you have to do nyasa so what exactly are you doing in a nyasa you are mentioning that the deity is here in your fingers deity is in your chest the deity is in your hand deity is here this if you worship tripur sundari two hours of nyasa only you will do so what exactly are you doing you are trying to create that environment there is some even a fractional amount of avesham of the energy of the deity inside your body because only that can take you into the higher state by your own effort you will never reach there so this is the very standard procedure there is nothing extraordinary about it nothing uh, fringe about it like you know only gaon mein hota hai we are more advanced hum log nahi hote aisa nahi it's just an integral part of dharma it's an integral part of sadhana without the nyasa if you if you just read that you know in the rudram when the uh, uh, say you are Uh, what exactly you are saying is that each of the deities are placed in different parts of your body so you're not you're just saying that this date yeah so he uh, there is shiva in the heart there is you know, this deity here in the hands this in the forehead etc etc same thing with other deities when not just rudra i mean even post vedic literature also whenever you are doing nyasa of any deity that's precisely what you are doing you are asking the devatas to come and be present inside your whole body be one with their and their conscious कॉन्शियसनेस भी तो इंग्लिश वर्ड हो गया मैंने इट इज लाइक देयर एनर्जी जो है लेट देम एंटर इनटू यू एट दैट मोमेंट एंड लेट देम ट्रांसफॉर्म यू एट दैट मोमेंट सो दैट इट इज दे हु आर डूइंग दिस साधना थ्रू यू बिकॉज़ दैट इज व्हेन यू मेक द बेस्ट प्रोग्रेस सो दिस इज अ वेरी स्टैंडर्ड प्रैक्टिस एब्सोल्युटली इवन इन द इन द एलैबोरेट फॉर्म ऑफ द विष्णु सहस्त्र नाम आल्सो यस डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ नारायण आर इनवोक्ड स्पेसिफिकली इन द न्यासा बिफोर यू एक्चुअली चैंट people think you know they they listen to emma subalakshmi and start chanting but actually yeah. when you really do the nyasam you have yes. each uh, you know and and it is uh, you, you you invite a particular form of narayana to animate a particular portion or part of your body like you mentioned Correct. and you so that yeah, absolutely See, you want to add anything uh, general overall ignorance of these things which are parents generation it is all taken for granted yes and today today we have to actually specifically lay out all these things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we have to explain all these things you know like and why so because you know fundamentally this poison of the english language mm. and the mindset that follows the mindset that follows where we are too good for these things yeah okay so you know we won't leave that yeah Yeah, just as a context, I think this question did come up. There, there was this uh, Prashant Acharya who said, uh, "No God can possess a human." I, I think mm-hmm. Sri Guru already answered it in a Facebook post. Actually, remember? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> जिनसे नहीं होता है वो तो बोलेंगे तो <laughs> तो हमें क्या प्रॉब्लम है उससे तुम खुश रहो यार एंड यू नो लाइक एंड हु डज ही हैव आई मीन आई डोंट विश टू डंप ऑन एनीबॉडी बट यू नो द ही इट्स एसेंशियली अ वेरी सोफिस्टिकेटेड फॉर्म ऑफ एथियिज्म या यू नो लाइक इट्स you know it's an atheist wolf in dharmic clothing you know like that that's mm-hmm. that that's you know so it is irrelevant for us you know it is the, completely and totally irrelevant for us people like that. it's a perfect perfect uh, phrase that you used you know atheist yeah. wolf in dharmic clothing perfect absolutely yeah. there are many like that and you will see that yeah, there yeah. or sabse majedar baat hota hai ki if you ask speak to them so if you tell them so what practice do you do in dharma no we are contemplating on the brahman matlab niche kuch nahi ekdam direct jo cheez hone wala nahi hai kabhi so because it is never going to happen so you are very secure about it <laughs> because wo to you will never have an experience of that it's not that simple brahman so, ratio ko tapasya karna pada but these people direct <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is the problem with pop vedanta you know uh, so direct oneness below that there is no two yeah yeah they are one with there is no doubt about it you know even they then are, there is a problem see there are upanishads a few days ago i was reading a text there are some of the upanishads i think uh, i think um, uh, you know one of the upanishads has a very beautiful description that there is a man and he's um, so uh, there is a divine entity and it's the the brahman the uh, the gods are saying that let's animate this man okay there is a uh, manushya human being mm. so how does you how do you animate that man so each of the deities are saying we will enter into different parts of this man and thus we animate him so somebody the agni enters into one part indra enters into another part varuna enters into another part etc and after everything has been uh, completed there is the atman which says that now to the brahmarandra i am going to enter into the human being and finally he will become completely awake so this is also possession this is also possession all in a way if you look at it the universe is animated by possession of the divine by avesham of the divine it comes in along with all its manifestations all the gods enters into it and then makes it alive otherwise there is nothing most important thing said today most important thing said today the universe itself is an avesham of the divine mm. that is something that we have lost we have mm. lost that instinctive cultural understanding and it is a tragedy that it has to be yes. articulated but okay you know it is what it is okay, yeah. so there is one allied uh, uh, question that for hmm. example uh, each of us have uh, our own kula devatas hmm. for example my kula devata is uh, though i live in mysore my kula devata is located in uh, in a place called tantondri in hmm. uh, karur now the, the hmm. question that people have is that uh, as they migrate from their villages into towns and cities and other things is it okay for them to choose the local deities there or are they or do they have to remain connected to their uh, kula devata so and actually bolo fir main bolta Uh, so my opinion is that if you are sure about a kula devata you have to worship your kula devata distance does not matter you can worship the lok you can and perhaps you should worship the local devatas in fact see this is the thing in our uh, just a little deviation because this question is not directly bears into the topic we are discussing but um, uh, when we worship a devata so when we are worshiping uh, in a in a, a tantric paddhati when a devata is worshiped there is not never one deity you are worshiping वैसा क्वेश्चन the concept is not like that so if i have to worship the primary deity there are uh, deepalas who have to be worshiped there are the grah devatas who have to be worshiped there are the you know uh, anga devatas who have to be worshiped there are the parivar devatas etc all of them have to be given their portions only then you go into the main devata so in here when you are worshiping multiple deities automatically if there is any sthana devata any pitha devata any pitha shakti anybody any powerful deity who resides close to where you stay Uh, some offering has to be given to them that's customary to do that and it's a very good practice but kula devata is a different thing kula devata worship not only worship has to be done but if you are aware of who the kula devata is there is a good practice to visit the kula devata on and off so 
that's oh, i believe yeah. one thing this movie has done is like about seven people have told me they are going back to their village <laughs> to connect with the kulas <laughs> <laughs> they are so dazed, you know, like, uh, okay. <laughs> because see what happens. What? We, we all read about it. It is so astonishing. It is so incredible. And I was really worried. Expectations are too high. There is no way this is going to live up to it. And then it became beyond any expectation. Beyond that any expectation that so uh, oh, that that who's somebody's thing is on i think thing is on i think ramesh no, is no, no. maybe no. if you can put it on mute yeah one yeah so um so that that moment when he gets the guliga deva into him is like a very precious moment, you know, because it is something that is so extraordinarily rare to witness. You never see divine wrath correctly depicted. This is the first time, I would say. This is uh, like mostly the first time. I think it's the first time. I have never seen it depicted like that. And it is so, uh, I would say we are blessed to have an experience like that. And why it was allowed to be shown now rather than any other time in the past? That is a question I haven't been able to answer. But there is a shift in consciousness that much, I'm sure. You know, and therefore, a certain door has been opened and we were given a glimpse. Like, here, see, this is your religion. You know, like, this is the reality of your religion. Not all this pop Vedanta, you know, like. <laughs> we are not against Vedanta, please. Nobody no, should. I no, yeah. I have the deepest respect for genuine Vedantic practitioners because yes. you'll see that those who are actually genuine, they also do the Devata Upasana. It's not that oh, kuch do line pad liya, yahan pe, phir gyan dene lag gaya ki sab Brahman hai. Adi Shankara, Adi Shankara ne kitne bhakti wale Wohi to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Is there any other question? Others? Uh, let uh, yes. a small point yeah, to yeah, add here. Yeah. One more thing just yeah. before I forget in the course of the conversation in this movie only. So there was one thing that I found very interesting even before we reach the climax of the movie. So here we see that uh, Shiva, or the the, uh, uh, the protagonist of the movie, so he already is a man who has a calling in the sense there's a destiny fixed for him that he will be possessed by the divine, by the devata, even though he may try and resist it, which is a very common phenomenon that happens actually among a lot of people. For what, whatever be the reason, in this case, he's scared because his father uh, passed, his you know, family passed a traumatic experience. His father ran away. But uh, the nightmares that he has, but more than the nightmares, it's nightmares is fine. More than the nightmares, those uh, places in the movie where he suddenly hears the sound of like jewelry, you know, that that kind of when there is that uh, when the deva in the form of the in that form comes in and decked in the jewelry and when he's moving there is that sound you know of the jewelry that is very very crucial because i believe um, it's just my personal opinion uh, i don't know uh, Rishabh, anything about the director i believe somebody who is deeply connected to these traditions must have advised him to add that bit or he has heard it from somebody who has experienced it because that is uncannily how exactly a deity one of the ways, I won't say the only way, but very uncannily, one of the ways in which a devata, uh, when he or she decides to have a closer interaction with an upasaka, uh, these things start off. So you will hear strange sounds. You will hear there will be sudden manifestation of certain kinds of perfumes or smells in that area. There will be sounds specifically. And very clearly, in certain cases of certain deities, it will be sounds like there are anklets or something like that, etc. That indicates the presence. See. Uh, Common uh, common understanding of people is that uh, when you are worshipping a deity, koi devata ka puja kar rahe, you have to have a vision of the deity. In my opinion, eyes are the last of all the things because eyes are the things that can delude you most easily, by the way. They make no mistake about it. Having a vision or seeing a deity is a good thing, but it's also a very okay, okay thing. Not all seeing is the same. 
you are not ramakrishna he sees kali once and he becomes ramakrishna uh, there are people i know who's every day something or the other they are seeing and they have become came exactly where they are there's not one inch of changes happened in their consciousness or in their nature uh, there are um, five senses that are given to us by nature panchindriyas are there all the indriyas will be utilized by the devata when they want to come into contact with an upasaka and sometimes you'll get to hear things sometimes you'll smell things there are certain deities when they manifest first thing that happens is whose chagame there will be a tremendous kind of a very specific kind of uh, uh, fragrance that will appear out of the blue it's not like koi perfume laga ke nahi aaya koi dhoop nahi laga koi agarbatti nahi laga apne aap se it will manifest and it will happen in such repeated occurrences that you will not think that it is some kind of a coincidence right after that there will be further you know this is just a precursor to the advancement of the approach of the deity so this part when he was when he was going in the forest and other places and he hears that sound of the jewelry there i found it very fascinating i i sincerely believe that uh, somebody who is very deep in this practices uh, somebody who is an upasaka perhaps perhaps of that region perhaps who does uh, actually uh, you know a senior bhuta kula uh, uh, performer who might have given him the idea that this is how you have to depict it this is how it should be done kyunki ye idea aise to dimag mein nahi aayega kisi ka i do not think an ordinary person will have any clue that the approach of a deity you have to make the sound of a, uh, a uh, some jewelry or something like that it's because it's way too odd either you are into the practice only then you will know if you have no idea because this is not something you will find easily in books this comes only when you enter into a path of upasana of the and you go deeper yeah. into it. let me say something about that i'm mm-hmm. the oldest amongst all of you when i was a child in kerala divya lakshanam was always fragrances yes. and sound yes. of absolutely you know, divya lakshanam was the term correct like, yeah. it was taken for granted that sound of jewelry and fragrance is divya lakshanam absolutely so, <laughs> so it it's i think in south india it's still a little common to have that knowledge Okay. in the rest of india in the rest of india only people in hardcore sadhana mm. only people in hardcore sadhana know that mm. so uh, you know like uh, yes but i i found the way that he stopped by the divine to be just mm. awesome mm. you know the way the divine is constantly wake up wake up wake up and you know like, mm. i don't want to do <laughs> i find and the kind of builds to a crescendo yes yeah. Yeah. each each visitation is slightly is is a progression along the it gets uh, more and more alarming you know? it gets more and more alarming it gets more and more insistent yeah. you know like yeah. you are ignoring me you are ignoring me you know like come on wake up mm. and uh, of course he is <laughs> <laughs> that carl gustav yeah. jung he famously said no it's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of a living god yes you know? yes yeah <laughs> you know that is that is what is uh, that is what is uh, yeah. yeah. uh, roiji also very briefly touched about uh, the significance of the varaha roopam in one hmm. of his post but didn't elaborate uh, do you think we should be uh, do you think you want to add uh, not you know so? like let it be let it be you know like uh, for instance many people don't understand that the guliga is not the other deva what is the the deva of the kshetram and the kshetrapala and panjurli is the uh, panjurli is the other one yeah and i'm like let it marinate in people little bit you know like let us also not fall into the trap of over explaining matters mm. so as i said you know i've been i've been saying for years we need one varaha murti and one bhairava temple in every street in india you know? and then matters will be very different so this pleases me enormously <laughs> this pleases me enormously to see because you know also uh, members of a particular community would get upset with varaha murti that is a bonus <laughs> yeah okay so you know i i just had promised in one of my post to talk about an experience talk about an ex- very similar to this this happened over 40 years back maybe 45 years back i'm not i don't i can't recall the exact year but you know in kerala we have a uh, velichappad uh, oracles they uh, are, they do the avesham of the devi of the bhagavati as it is called 
So I, I went there because I was going through a very bad time in life and my parents, not my parents, actually my family, my extended family took me there. And this guy who doesn't know me from Adam, he told me all sorts of things about myself that even I had not told a single living soul. And, you know, he just had, it was very obvious he was connected to something. So that was interesting. So the next day I went to the temple because I was so fascinated by this. And there was a problem in the village. The problem was that one of the rich people had overnight put a gate on some land which led to the river where all the people took their animals to drink water. And uh, see, we are talking 40, 45 years back. So immediately everybody said, I still remember distinctively, police in Gaudadi Manda don't involve the police in the courts. And so they all got together and the Velichapad came. Now, when the Velichapad formally goes to meet somebody, one person walks in a very stately manner in front of him with a long rod and there's a velaka, a lamp hanging behind that. And he walks in all his glory behind him. So it's a whole boy like hair. There's a whole ceremonial, ceremonious aspect to it. And then suddenly he just, he comes in front and he takes off like a rocket. And everybody knows, okay, now we are going to have some fun. And this is an old guy. He's like an irkili. You know what is an irkili? The, the, that uh, that thin cotton, uh, that thin coconut broom ka jo hota na, individual stand is that thin. And he's running like a sprinter. And the rest of us are after him, you know, like an old man running like that. And he's not going by the path. He's going by the dead straight line to where the gate is. And in his path, a sapling comes and he's so furious, he chops it in one blow. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way you can chop something like that with one blow. But he chops it. Vignam! <laughs> Then he goes and sits over there and with that, call that Adya Prasadni, call that impertinent fellow, you know, like now he's in that royal mood of the Devi, you know. So the fellow comes and he's very resistant. And this is what freaks me out even today. Now, if you know about the Valachapad, one of the powers or one of the powers of the Devi is the ability to control pox in the village, smallpox. And after talking to him about 10, 15 minutes, he realized this guy is not going to. So he just brought daylight. Everybody is there. And he just made pox manifest all over his hand. And he said, should I press it into the ground? Which means save his family, his entire prosperity, everything gets rogered, you know, like forever. And he said, if you're going to be like that, then what can I do? So, you know, like, I was stunned and incomprehending and I started asking questions, how is this possible? And they're all laughing at me. City boy doesn't know these things because for them, this is all normal. You know, Kaligari, he just became like that and then he can run fast, he can chop a sapling down with one stroke, he can manifest pox. What, why are you asking these questions? I found that they were... Uh, they couldn't comprehend. They couldn't comprehend my questions. They couldn't understand my mind. Like, what is this foolishness? And one person even snidely said, oh, this is what happens when you get educated in the city. <laughs> and this is something I've never said in public. I've only told my disciples and my family knows it. Today, I don't care. I'm old enough now to not care and say, yes, we need these stories. We need to preserve these memories. We need these kind of that. This is not fake. This is not fraudulent. This is not superstition. All this is real. You know, so I said, OK, I'm going to say it out in public now. I don't care. Let people say that he is deluded. Yeah, we are all deluded. All of us had a mass psychotic breakdown. We had a mass hallucination. You know, like, come on, man. Come on. You know, so this was, I think it was one of the very formative experiences of my life. You know, like, I realized that, oh, what we call the devas are not Amar Chitra Kata. There is something really eerie 
and uh, beyond what we can comprehend with our limited senses. Mm -hmm. You know, that became very firmly established in my mind that the Devas are not like extremely powerful grandparents or, you know, which is the mm -hmm. general idea of a Deva, you know, like, <laughs> and I realized that the Deva is uh, inhuman or mm -hmm. non-human. 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 You know, there is a non-human aspect to the Deva. There is a eerie aspect to the Deva. You know, there is a, an aspect that is mm. uh, like it, it kind of sends your mind into turmoil. And it was such an imprinting. Ex then, you know, life happens and you forget about it. But over mm. the years, I keep remembering that day, you know, like I saw something so spectacular. I saw something so. And then I saw that in certain uh, like the Bhutakolo only in Kerala, they actually do the makeup of the. Uh, the person with pox everywhere. <laughs> I'll see if I can dig up that picture and I'll post it tomorrow. Also, you know? mm. <clears throat> but it is a genuine power, by the way. He has, he has few limited powers, but one of the powers is the ability to like pox a pox on you. You know. <laughs> 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 and by the way, all this was possible even in Delphi, by the way. If you mm. didn't listen to the oracle, then mm. pucks would break out. So mm. it is this this sort of shamanistic so occult. Shamanistic. All pagan cultures had it. And today it is there only in us and maybe a few uh, South American or Siberian shamans, things like that, they have it, you know. But I saw this and I don't care if anybody believes me. There is no reason for me to lie. You know, I am saying this happened. I saw it myself. I am witness. And it is, it really was an education. That's all I can say. Because I was also, I was also understanding Hinduism from books. And that is the worst way to understand Hinduism. It is, a, it is an idiotic way to understand Hinduism. And today we have too many of these book Hinduism peoples sitting in the judiciary, sitting in the media, sitting in the government, and they have no experience with these kind of things. And then Rishabh Shetty, God knows what, what he ate and woke up, he decided to make this movie. <laughs> so, and I specifically liked that just day before I was seeing Somebody posted that some somebody I think asked him that can you make this in Hindi? Can you make and his uh, reaction was so perfect. He says that there uh, there are actors and all I respect and all that, but to make this you have to believe in it. First of all, you have to be a part of the culture. If you're not a part of the culture, if you don't believe in it, what are you going to make? That is so absolutely apt answer. So he says that he has no intention of remaking it in Hindi or any other language. This man is a believer. This man is not just man, a museum piece art and all that I'm seeing. So that's what happens when they, an unfortunate uh, situation it has been this way that since especially the time of independence for many generations and all, we have been fed by a government which also wanted to introduce these kind of ideas. So either Hinduism means you have to constantly reform it. And if you're not reform it, then you have to find a twisted psychological explanations for things which don't need those explanations. When the explanations are worse than the actual phenomena actually. Hmm. So these kind of, so ap, many, I, I, I remember there was in, in Bengali, uh, there used to be a, a, a radio show. I, I don't know if the show still goes on. So once I heard it and there was some uh, episode with respect to deities and tantrics and kind of horror and, uh, you know, suspense kind of things. It's very popular. It's well done. But before that, they read out a full five minutes disclaimer of this is not superstition. We are not promoting these things. We are not promoting that things. My first question is, what the hell is superstition? How do you define superstition? I mean, I believe, for example, that everybody who believes that there is one supreme superpower, they are the ones who are superstitious. I have not seen that superpower. You have not seen that superpower. They themselves are not seen. What's the superstition? Now? So, what is the definition of a superstition? But well, that see that these are the questions nobody asks. So there we have been brainwashed to believe. Anything related to deities, anything related to these kind of practices is a superstition. We are all those, you know, uh, uh, some absurd monotheistic wannabe we want to become. There is a Brahman who has never, nobody has seen. And obviously I cannot recognize that and you cannot. And we just, you know, say a few nice sounding lines, which nobody's analyzed. Anything other than that is superstition. And we need constant reform. All absolute rubbish, absolute nonsense, absolute drivel. 
प्रोपागेटेड बाई पीपल हुए जीरो एक्सपीरियंस इन दिस थिंग्स कभी साधना किया नहीं है कुछ आइडिया नहीं है जीरो इट्स जस्ट लाइक यू नो यू सम uh i remember this example suppose uh, english becomes a dead language today and 5000 years later somebody finds a book in english and there's a line in that and says that uh, a, a bull in a china shop okay so it's a phrase we know that is used to depict a certain thing but us samay to samajh mein nahi aayega so then they write an essay ki 5000 saal pehle people used to keep bulls inside china shops and that's a very fantastic phenomena so these kind of people are actually telling us what hinduism is and that is where we this we are in the situation that um, you know it's a way of life and it is this and that and things which practicing hindus are pane wo bhi ajeeb cheez hai matlab main to kabhi i have never thought that this is this way so that ye bada beaucoup hai na christianity islam buddhism jainism are not ways of life ye kya jokar wala dialogue hai <laughs> like they are not well of life only we are aware oh. of we are life is it we have life i mean god knows what that means <laughs> what the is yes yeah, only yeah hinduism alone is a way of, a way of life and our uh, the dharma shastra is, 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 is it's been replaced by constitution why mass of hindus only they don't know all this. so if you ask them that you know if you tell them i, I saw that in a temple so you are worshiping <clears throat> somebody some firang had come there and baat karte karte and as usual firangs attempt to get confused after some time that there's so many deities and this is happening and that is happening how ganesha is coming out of here he is coming mm. <laughs> so, so he is that firang is asking that you have so many gods <laughs> and that person is like immediately mix of embarrassment shyness and all that comes up. no 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 we are worshiping one only <laughs> you would have seen that laughable explanation he goes into okay all this it's just one and we are part of all this but this is well, you this know is i have said that hinduism hinduism is not responsible for the spiritual poverty of other religions agar tum log ke paas multiple devtas nahi hai wo apna problem nahi hai hamare paas hai bhai we are a modern country it's so severe and people have absorbed it and all this so but yeah, yeah. The all, side, there are all various <laughs> aspects of the same all yeah. the gods are same all the you know like they are not the same uh, they are not at all the same everybody is the same. <laughs> yeah but yeah like i said we are spiritual poverty wali baatein hain you know like hamare paas hai bhaiya bhagwan pe bhagwan pe bhagwan hai wo we are not going to apologize for that you go mm. and find out better yet come and join us most mm. well you know we are not going to apologize <laughs> for having <laughs> apologize for having, <laughs> for having <laughs> we are not going to apologize for my apology there is an yeah. element of the inferiority kind of complex also yeah yeah you see yes, how people say that exactly so, uh, so much better for us to have one book one god and other things then we'll have greater unity if we have mm. that kind of uh, you see that is the day we are done for that is the day we are done for let there be multiplicity of paths let there be multiplicity of processes if we have and you know we have certain so called socio cultural organizations <laughs> trying to get this all into one into one one framework which should be opposed tenuously mm. that is asuric mm. you know hiranyakashipu after all started up no worship me alone i am the only god like so wo asuric ek mindset hai even we, we cannot in fact even inside dharma those uh, as as it developed over time and the concept of ishvara came in that one you know one powerful date so here also it is very very important to remember that the worship of ishvara of any path whether you are a you know a shaiva who considers shiva as ishvara or a vaishnava who considers vishnu as ishvara etc so the worship always entails multiple entities it is never just one never ever just one to worship shiva you have to worship the shiva parivara you have to worship uh, ganas you have to worship start with the grahas there is no worship that is going to start until you placate the grahas the deepalas the sthana devatas kshetrapalas etc tab to ja ke baaki ka to baad mein aayega regardless of whom you consider as an ishvara so the fundamental structure has not changed at all there is never not one point where any of the primary powers of dharma primary paths of dharma sampradayas of dharma have ever Uh, believed in idea that oh i don't believe in anything just one deity and nothing else no that one always encompasses a parivara devata there are always multiple layers you will have to approach it this way either you go it this way this is the way it is to be in a polytheistic culture and let us not even use the word henotheistic which there is another word that is very popular which is which is fine 
But I am saying that it's time to remove all that. Also, we are polytheistic. We are proudly polytheistic. We are wonderfully polytheistic. Yeah. There is no harm in this, and there is not even a necessity to always, um, you know, uh, provide Vedantic explanations to everything. The Leela of the gods. So there are. Uh, I mean, I see that very often a tendency among uh, intellectually oriented people who perhaps deep down somewhere find it difficult to recognize the idea that why there are so many gods and why this god is doing this and that god is why Vishnu becomes a mohini and ye kyu ho jata, wo ho jata, etc. Uh, it's just like human beings, just like uh, just like the world. Why does your friend behave this way? Why does that friend behave that way? Why is my boss this way? Why is my this way, why is that person that way, etc. etc. Because there are different people, there are different tendencies, different natures, there are different gods, different tendencies, different natures. They interact with them, they do whatever they have to do, and not everything needs to have some great master plan happening inside that you have to decode. No, it is the way it is. We worship gods because they are way more powerful and they for all practical purposes are almost infinite from our point of view. They they remain way before. They remained way after. They, if, if today we were to vanish, they'll still be there. And they're kind enough to interact with us. That is the reason we interact with them. That is the whole of our culture is devised in this way. There is the occult realm. There is the realm of the devatas. And here we are. And how do we translate those energies, raw energies, into something more meaningful? This is precisely of when she first, uh, Rudra first appears in the Vedic Pantheon. How does he come? He comes with a bang. He enters into the field in the sense there's a yajna where he's not in the yajna. He's from an outsider. He's, he's something terrible. We don't like him. <clears throat> he goes, destroys the yajna, replaces the head of Daksha with that of a goat. And then we have the Vedic ritual that comes in and etc. So when you read the Rudram, the first Anubhaka is just asking him to calm down. Basically, the yeah. whole whole genius of the uh, of the Hindu mind and not even the Aryan mind, let's just use the word Hindu of the Hindu mind, has been that we have devised such powerful excellent rituals karmakanda, mantras, etc which is like an occult language by which a deity as ferocious and powerful as Shiva, we are able to take some blessing from him. So there has to be a, a way of communication. The whole world functions to communication. A ritual is nothing but a method of communication. We have devised a method of communication by which we can interact with the gods who are also kind enough to interact with us. This is all there is. You see, okay, this fundamental core around which everything that we have for thousands of years have developed, whether it's art, culture, this, that, everything. If you remove the datas, there's nothing left. The then you're becoming all this kind of, you know, uh, uh, civilization where the it, it's like a dead body where the spirit has left. And and specifically, you know, answering that question that's come up about the Advaita and all that, Shankara was the most polytheistic of all uh, yeah. gurus. If exactly. you actually see, <laughs> I, mean, I will allow. Uh, I will not allow Hinduism to become a museum piece. Simple. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. I will not allow Hinduism to become a display religion. Our devtas are real. The forms are not aesthetic and artistic. The forms have been seen by rishis yes. and then explained to us. Ye symbolic jo hoti hai na, that uh, the cultural form of it is important. And the mm -hmm. spiritual, no, I'm not going to allow that. Like I said, Oracle of Delphi. Let us keep going back to Oracle of Delphi. Socrates is the wisest man in Greece. Okay. All of the world knows that story. Oracle of Delphi mein puja nahi hota hai. Hmm. Oracle of Delphi mein band ho gaya. Hmm. So the certifying authority is gone. The certificate still exists. Very strange. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I, 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 uh, yes, I agree with that. I can listen to Rashi talking about these things all day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to, I want to raise a very specific point about the archetypal energies at play in this movie. See, uh, I find that the two biggest hits this year, RRR and um, Kantara. Both of them go back to the core, which is the forest. We are a forest culture, Vana. You know, our tapasya, rishi, all of that is connected to Vana. 
so we have taken a big circle and gone back to the origin and more importantly this is a hero narrative you know like these two movies they both start with the main character or at least one of the main characters he is in a langot he is hairy he is muscular that is enkidu the wild man of the forest from the gilgamesh myth you know and in gilgamesh he is two thirds god one third human being and he is a nuisance to society just like the police wala in both the movies it is the gilgamesh character is the police wala and he is a nuisance and it is by engaging with enkidu the wild man of the forest that he starts developing a social conscience he starts becoming kinder so i find it fascinating that this story which is the oldest recorded story of human kind was already in the first mythic hero archetype you know and i do not know whether rishab shetty and s s rajamouli know the story it is quite likely they do they seem to be educated people or it could be that they don't but the fact remains that an archetype is so powerful that the minute you tap into it it plays out the same way one movie is in telugu one movie is in kannada and both of them start with the langot fellow <laughs> the hairy langot guy <laughs> pure enkidu that is enkidu right from 6000 years back you know and he is powerful and he is raw and he is uh, and he is a protector you know enkidu is a protector gilgamesh is becoming a social nuisance so the gods create enkidu to protect society from the depredations of gilgamesh of course the story goes much more but i find this one mythic archetype and the fact that the archetype in all cases begins in the forest now india the difference between india and all the other religions is fundamentally that we are a vana our uh, all our great religions are vana religions you know they have come out of the forest and we are in opposition to the mindset that comes out of the desert you know so i find this uh, uh, this parallel between forest archetype and desert archetype to be very interesting and for the first time we are having the forest being the vana being unabashedly without explanation without apology uh, without qualifications without uh, any kind of uh, restriction or uh, I, i would say feelings of being small or being jungly and uncouth the vana is very proudly presented you know like you know that that moment when you first see rishab what is he doing he is in his langot and he is roaring mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> you know and the same when the junior and ti are in rrr you know when you first see him he is again in that and i'm like did nobody notice that it's the same image both times it's the enkidu image you know it's that wild man of the forest who is the so this wild man of the forest activating i think is a very wonderful thing you know that the archetype is activating i think it's a very wonderful thing because it is a sign of life the forest is the source of life you know so if something if an archetype is shown to be activating from the forest and coming in and softening the forces of society in both cases the policemen in both movies are the forces of society who are oppressive and they are softened and they are converted into being helpful to society i think at a meta level it's brilliant now most people may wonder what tangent i'm going off in it's not a tangent it's very important when an archetype activates in a society something very fundamental has happened in that society a very fundamental shift has happened in that society you see we have lamented all three of us we have lamented that leftists make the best movies they have the best artistic but this year finally the right has got its word you know like uh, kashmir files rrr mm. uh, that uh, kartikeya 2 mm. and now this movie and ram gopal verma twice he has said when yeah. he made kashmir files he said i do not know how to comprehend this movie this goes against everything that i know about film making and it has become such a hit so obviously i don't know everything i don't know everything. and then about this movie about uh, kantara what he said is rishab shetty should charge tuition fees to other filmmakers because <laughs> and he said the box of his collection is a heart attack to all the other filmmakers because 16 no. crores is 260 crores i mean there is no, no close to 2 no 280 yeah is it 
It's almost stretching 300. I mean, the last time I remember yeah. we being on the hit was uh, oh, in the 1980s. And few you of know, the other things in the movie, I mean, not yeah. just the you know the divine part, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, we who would have thought yeah. that something like this could be depicted in cinema. Uh, uh, the other places where I, I specifically like that, you know, where he has a conflict with the policeman and he starts bursting the crackers. Okay, he just takes it and just yeah. one after the other stuff. That is such <laughs> an amazing scene. So and, and there, there is a very uh, yeah there is a very the, interesting comment also he makes. You know, he specifically says, do you think mm. the uh, animals will be scared? I mean, that's so contextual, you know. When we <laughs> so, animals <laughs> scared, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, people are posting these uh, memes of yes. their dogs getting scared. So, he says, do you think that? Or he says, uh, and when the policeman says, you know, uh, I will not let you do. He said, who will, who will file a case? He said, I'll burst crackers. Do you think the animals will, will file a case against me? So, <laughs> You know, that these are so, so this is the beauty of this film like there is the central theme of the deity that is there that is depicted yeah. with such that tremendous with such nuance and um, i mean now that i speak suddenly i remembered another point so there uh, so beautifully initially at the last sequence you'll see that there is a fight going on and initially these people you know the landlord guy and his uh, people are kind of uh, beating up the villagers and they're getting killed and all that all that and Shiva, he falls down and he falls down and there is some blood that comes out and falls in the stone. So the whole point, and before that he's been saying very casually, he's been saying with his friends, ki, at least in the Hindi dialogues, okay, uh, so Guli ka dev, we just need to ek bali dena hai, unko, ek murga ka bali hai, so jo problem hai, bala hai, wo tal jaga, etc. So what he exactly, this is so typical, the moment there is blood, blood, the whole point of a bali is exactly to offer the blood. That's it. The moment that blood comes in, and that too from him, it comes in. Immediately, there is a transformation that happens. And you would not believe it. There are still Lukasakas. Okay, even, even this date, till, till this date, <coughs> who worship certain deities, uh, Mahavidyas and all that, on specific tithis, they will <laughs> offer their own blood to the deity. And if you were, uh, this is a practice I never recommend to people because 99 what 99? I'll say that 99.9999% of the people don't have the stomach to handle what happens after that. It's very different from offering the uh, offering a Pashubali, by the way. When an Upasaka offers his blood to the deity, the, the change that happens is too dramatic, too drastic, too fast, too furious for ordinary people to handle. And I've seen the consequences of this a few times uh, with people. Uh, but my point is that this happens. So these things, I don't know how he got this idea. I don't think it can be uh, his, I don't know if it's his own idea or somebody his must have advised him. I believe that he perhaps had stayed there with the, you know, the very senior, very respected Bhutakala artists and all that. And those people who have been performing this for uh, generations after, not just generations, decades and decades. So automatically there are things that you will understand. You, are, you don't need to read a book to understand. You see these and you understand. This is the practicality of dharma. This is why dharma is sanatan. Because even if you don't know the text, if you do the process, you'll still get the result as people had got thousands of years ago. That is why it is eternal. Okay. So these people, they must have advised him. You put it this way. You put a scene like this. He falls down. There's a blood that comes from his forehead or somewhere and falls on the stone. Uh, on that, you know, the vigraha actually. We shouldn't even call it a stone. That's a vigraha. The moment it falls, immediately there is that scene. The transformation happens and the deity who has been kind of preparing him for this moment all through the movie just enters into him. And then the, you see what you see. There's an absolutely furious divine display of, you know, this is what a protected deity, a deva can do to the enemies of dharma, basically. In that context, those people are the adharma and he's in the, you know, uh, in the line with dharma. So that is amazing. And this central theme, even without that, the side themes that were there, like this bursting of the crackers, yeah. or that particular, you know, that dialogue was so fascinating. They're doing that, you know, that survey of the forest and all that. And this guy says that you can't take those leaves and all. And he suddenly comes in and says that, Are, aapne permission liya kya? So that is just yeah. terrific. That's fantastic. And then there is one other uh, very important uh, thing that comes up. You know, the uh, Shiva's brother, the Guru, who is the original, mm. you know, dancer and all that. Mm. When uh, when the uh, the the chief villain, the headman, uh, tells him, mm. 
that you can continue to be the deva but you will be a deva who will uh, say what i want yes yes and he says <laughs> and you know guru says something that is very very critical he says mm. even if i want to do it i don't think the deva will allow me to do it one mm. and second he says when 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 he says you know he starts he stabs him with a knife he says i think you still did not understand when i said that you will be the person responsible for setting all of this right and now yes. you you have you yourself have initiated the process i mean process exactly so even even this this death was required i mean, I mean so, yes sir yes, superb sir. dialogue superb dialogue in fact an ugra devata when they are invoked to correct a situation they will not do it in so let's come and have and let's do chai pe charcha and let's fix things no they are going to cause mayhem they are going to cause death, death. they are going to cause yes, death is a very simple thing for a deity if somebody dies you get reborn somewhere else and they have the power to make sure that you are reborn in the circumstances and environment where whatever else you had missed out in this life you'll continue there so that is exactly on ugra devata so the beauty of this is it's there is a finality in this way a deity approaches a situation when a devata decides ki i have to intervene there is no scope of uh, oh, okay I, if i were to do this and if i were to do that maybe i can escape there is no escape because the deity doesn't see like a devata doesn't see one step at a time or you know next 5 minutes next 10 minutes next 20 minutes no a devata sees everything right up to years and decades and in lifetimes actually so it knows that what are your escape routes it knows that it's like a game of chess it knows ki tum whether you put this pawn or you that pawn eventually you'll end up here only so it has already foreseen all the conclusions it has seen that what is the best route to achieve that specific result using whatever technique is necessary and that depends on the ugrata of the devata an ugra devata whenever you invoke is going to give you the results if the invocation is correct but it will do it in its own manner it is not going to actually not going to make things in a very okay, let's all be happy and this is another beauty of the movie right at the beginning when he asks when he takes the vigraha and there is the avesham that happens uh, and he says that you know uh, even if you were to go back on your words i may forgive you but guliga will not forgive you okay that is fascinating dialogue it's fascinating dialogue absolutely terrific dialogue so that's what i think this movie has got so many layers this is like a classic the more you think about it if you're interested in these things the more you think about it you'll see that there are layers and layers coming out and this is going to burn people who are fundamentally atheist i am not using the word nastika because nastika is a very technical connotation of not believing in the vedas i am saying fundamentally you don't believe in the divine you don't have a faith on the devas you don't believe that there is a world outside of the five senses those people and there are people who are born into hindu families and who are culturally hindu or traditionally it's because it's passed down from families so they're doing something but actually they don't have faith even those people get shocked by these and they see these and think they is kya dikha raha hai when it's like how would i put it to you know borrow a phrase from uh, rohit ji when he says that you know that uh, throwing holy water on the vampire that type of situation ho jata hai so their first reaction is that ye nahi nahi ye to ho nahi sakta hai we only brahman is exist is how can possession and all that superstition you are putting okay so that it's an organic vital reaction this is precisely what happens when uh, now i'm not calling all of these people as asuras but yeah so when there is a divine energy in that place and there is a negative entity uska pehla reaction ye hota hai ye sab kya ho raha hai and then it will try all sorts of techniques to show that nahi nahi hum The, is the, i am calling them asuras i have no problem calling them asuras no but the chota level ka utna bhi aukat nahi hai unka but wo asur banne ke liye bhi bahut kuch karna padega tab bas wo extra wale asura who used to stand and wave the sword and say jai lankeshwar see the 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 asuras are by the way one yeah. second just <laughs> see asuras are all believers ha huh? they have been doing their tapasya wo oh, they have yeah. worship shiva Correct. they have worship bhagavati they worship brahma and all that full fledged they have done after that they do whatever nonsense they do but no asura is an atheist no atheist is stupid that's all yeah. asuras are not stupid they are very intelligent they know what their their occult realities it's a different matter they use it for selfish purposes that is what an asura is so asura to bahut upar level ka ho gaya but uh, then so Uh, you know people who have been fed with the peculiar secular complex of everything is then ye sab sab backward hai they their reaction to this movie 
I mean, it's amazing. It, it's wonderful to watch. It's wonderful to watch. Just as beautiful as the movie is, it's also beautiful to watch their reaction. It's like you know, just taking the fish out of water. How the hell? See, this is what happens when an archetypal movement happens. When a yes, so, happens. You know, the 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 stuck and stagnant energy is suddenly and violently pushed forward. You know, that there was a, and of course, this is a, this is a reaction. You know, we have been under assault for so long. Our festivals have been under assault. Our cultural practices, our spiritual practices, our religious practices, we have been assault for so long. And now the, this is part of the counter. This is part of the counter. And what I like so much about this movie is that whether he is doing it consciously or he's being guided or it's just talent on his part, it is just so organic. The response is just so this is who I am, deal with it. And, uh, you know, like we must, more and more of us must be become like that. You know, I mean, I've said, I think I've said this before on one of your podcasts, but I find it very upsetting when people from other countries, Hindus, uh, you know, uh, Caucasians who are Hindus, they say that we wish more Hindu gurus were like you, Sri Guru. We wish more Hindu gurus were assertive about the culture and assertive about the religion like you. So proud and confident about it, not being apologetic. And that is what I liked about this movie. It doesn't give one rat's ass. You know, it is so confident. It is so completely... Uh, in its own skin, it is so perfectly in tune with its environment that it does not care to explain, it does not care to justify, it just deals with reality. You know, this is how we do things. And we need more of that. We need this constant apologetics that we have. I'm getting sick and tired of it. I'm not, you know, this might sound strange to people, but I'm not by nature an aggressive person, but there's no choice in the matter now. You know, we have to become assertive about our religion. We have to become assertive yes. about our culture. And most of all, we have to become assertive about our religious practices. Mm -hmm. We are not going to change our religious practices in the surface of woke damasery, you know. Mm -hmm. Let everybody be clear about that. Mm -hmm. And we will do all this. We will do Deva Avesham. We will see what yeah. you part of this yeah. box. Mm. You know, I'm like, I've, 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 I've had it. I've literally had it with this over rationalization and this inferiority complex apologetics for everything. No, we are 6,000 years old. We are the last surviving pagan culture in the world. We are the last surviving classical culture in the world. Yes. We're the last what surviving the... classical culture in the world. True. Yeah. Absolutely. What the hell? That is true. Absolutely true. What the hell? We mm. don't have to explain ourselves to anybody. They have to explain ourselves themselves to us. Yes. And one point just suddenly, you know, it came to mind. Well, he was saying that. So, uh, so this this confidence that we see in the movie, in the filmmaker, and in the character of that uh, of Shiva. Okay, throughout the movie, is confident. The only place is confident. where he is only place where he is not able to reconcile initially is when the so deva comes to him the because he's scared. Comes. It's not that he does not scared. believe in it. He's scared because of a traumatic experience that has happened. Experience. There is no point. At no point does it is it shown that you know he is an atheist or he is doesn't faith. No, there's absolute faith on it. In fact, there's a scene where Guruva tells him that you know you pranam karke deva ko pranam karke tum jao jo bala hai tal jayega. And he says, okay, okay, I'll do that. Okay, there's no no atheism in him. But uh, the character that is shown, somebody who is uh, uh, I don't know um, uh, you know somebody who is kind of physically aggressive but not just physically aggressive so wherever there is a situation where somebody needs protection he immediately doesn't think too much he jumps into the fight etc somebody who comes th that is one aspect of his character uh, of course he drinks and various other things he does and all that uh, the second aspect that he's born into the family so which means that he carries the dna of people who have been doing this 
Avesham for generations after generations. So that property is already there in him. This is number two. And number three is that he's destined for it some ways. So he, that makes him, his aggressive, uh, his typical nature, his aggressive nature makes him uh, very, very apt for worship of deities, devatas who are, whose primary role is protection. Be it Bhairava, uh, be it Guliga Deva here, etc. These people succeed in the worship of these deities very quickly if they just have the inclination for it. Because there is a certain raw integrity and honesty in it. Uh, it may sound strange, but there is an honesty in this kind of a character. Uh, in his own, you know, to use, to borrow very sophisticated terms, uh, he appears at times as a bit rough and uncouth and all that, but there is still some integrity and honesty in that. And this honesty is very vital in the worship of these kind of deities. Then being very floral and superficially um, sophisticated, but inside having a very hollow shell. Whoa, he's, those people cannot worship he's, these deities. He's trying, he's trying by misbehavior to escape his destiny. Yes, yes, he, yes. He's hoping, he's hoping that mm. because he's behaving badly, he's drinking, he's hunting animals, and therefore mm. the god will say, okay, you're not fit. Yes. See, this too is archetypal, by the way. This is another mm. thing that is very important. Mm. One of the famous archetypes is the resistance to the call to greatness. Mm. Mm. Resisting mm. the call to greatness. There is a call mm. to be great, mm. and you're like, I don't want to. I don't want to be. Huh? <laughs> I don't want to be. And one of the classic ways in which people try to avoid their destiny mm. is by mm. misbehaving. I'll do the things that the Deva doesn't like. Mm. I'll drink, I'll hunt, I'll, I'll yes. not do anything properly. And, you know, it's so that's what I'm saying. I find this even more than Arara. Now, in Arara, of course, in the end, again, the Vana, the last fight happens in the Vana. Mm -hmm. Sri Rama and Bhima literally in front of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, Usman, no, but mm -hmm. this is another archetypal dimension which is not normally seen. The person mm -hmm. who is resisting his destiny. Correct. The person resisting the call to greatness and trying to avoid that by being a bad person or being Correct. misbehaving. You know, so at so many levels, this is uh, Ramachandra had made a very interesting point. He said, I've read so many reviews of this movie and everybody approaches it from another way. And that itself is proof that there is a Deva behind it. Hmm. That so many various points of view are brought out. So many perspectives are brought out. Rama Venugopalan wrote a fantastic piece about authenticity in performing arts and how the performing arts, if you're authentic, you know, just because you're doing a performing art doesn't mean you're in touch with the divine. But if you do it with sincerity, then the divine may touch you. Then the divine may touch you. You know, no, and it is fact, a real... Even, yeah. uh, I had read a book, even, uh, I don't know if it still happens there, but in North, uh, during, uh, you know, in earlier generations, so sometimes there used to be in, in Bengal what we call Jatra, which is basically plays and all that. And those are based on uh, religious topics, especially related to Radha Krishna or Rama or things like that. So in the performance, sometimes it would last for not just one day, for seven days, ten days or something like that. So by the time uh, it would go to seven, eight days, the people actually start believing that the main character who's playing Krishna or who may be playing Rama, etc., that he is divine and they will touch his feet and all that after that. Okay. So it's a very normal part of culture. There's nothing to be, you know, you know, uh, uh, having that, uh, yeah, that, you know, yeah, kya kar etc. No, that's perfectly, absolutely normal. And this is precisely the same embodiment of the same idea that if you keep behaving like the deity, the deity may decide to have an avesham inside you. And in that moment, your consciousness changes. In fact, if you're doing sadhana of a devata, what you're trying to do at the higher levels is at the highest level of uh, siddhi. And by siddhi, I don't mean only miraculous powers and all that. What I mean is devata siddhi. At the highest level of siddhi, this is precisely what happens. The deity is inside you, inside your body. That individual is not a human being anymore. He just looks like human. But inside him, everything is the divine. Everything is that devata. Even the word divine is not enough to capture this. Devata is the word. Because divine is a word as in daiva. Daivata hai. Lekin kaun sa ka daiva? If you are worshipping Hanuman, then you have a certain kind of characteristics it will enter. If you are worshipping a Mahavidya, say you are worshipping Tara, a certain kind of characteristics will enter inside you. If you are worshipping somebody else, a certain another type of characteristics. 
looking you will see these things if you if you meet people like that you will have no doubt about it oh those are not human beings those are like uh, they just have the physical appearance of a human being but it is the god who has entered into him and you just do pranam to them that's all you don't rationalize you don't talk see even in the gita how beautifully this it is structured at initial five i think i think 10 chapters yeah 10 chapters krishna is giving one after the other this is karma yoga this is this yoga this is that yoga this is happening that is happening moksha is also possible and then he again goes on etc et and more. then there is the vibhutis he talks about and he has that uh, the supreme manifestation and what does arjuna do he's scared first reaction is scared when you see something like this an energy that powerful in front of you if it ever appears uh, if okay. somebody has the fortune because Something has to be in the pradabdha to be able to meet an individual like that. Uh, you, your rationalization is a which either you will fall down at the feet in reverence or you will run away from their scared and you will try and convince yourself that it's all But you will never enter into that space. You will be so shit scared. Wo, ho, normal mind, normal consciousness mein power hai nahi wo lene ka. And that is precisely why the sadhanas are given. So you build up your power so that you can take the energy of a devata. That is all it is. We are uh, just just as a reminder, we are ninety five minutes into it now. Time flew off pretty Time fast. Pretty fast. Yeah, I mean we've been uh, talking about uh, so much. I think there is just uh, one question that uh, you know came up in the chat also. It is also something that. Um, uh, came up. I think they uh, one of them uh, wanted to know uh, <coughs> about the Kshetra Palakas because you know even here Rishabh in several of his inter interviews uh, speaks of these uh, uh, Kshetra Palakas and uh, he also says that uh, you know whenever uh, the, the whole idea was that he also wanted to uh, bring that into the picture that there are uh, that you, you, uh, right from a young age uh, you know that there was there was a very there was a very interesting interview but it is in tamil where he, you know he speaks uh, he speaks excellent tamil also so he says uh, there is this uh, interviewer who is a dravidoid so he says he says the typical guy who says uh, how did you introduce all these things i mean uh, do you think uh, you believe all of these things is it uh, true and all of that then he said, this is something that I grew up from the, uh, from my very young age. You know, my father used to do this, my elders used to do it. And I got, went back to my same village and shot all of this there. So there is nothing that I did not know about or did not, uh, have not seen earlier that I have shot here. So everything that I've experienced or seen is what I shot. So that was another answer, which is, you know, uh, very uh, critical. And in that he said, you know, these two people are the, these two deities are our, uh, Kshetra Palakas, you know, if they are completely, uh, they don't protect us just because even when we are there, but they are with us when we even move out of the place. I mean, they are, uh, because the Kshetra is, can also refer to a body, right? I mean, it's not mm. just the Kshetram mm. as in uh, this one. And so these uh, Kshetra Palakas, he said, protect us everywhere and uh, it uh, doesn't require. I think that is a, a critical thing that even because that the, inter the, the interviewer, did not ask a question for but i i saw at least a 30 45 second uh, 90 second pause where he did not know what to say <laughs> i mean i think he did not expect an answer like this <laughs> yeah yeah the secular brigades are you know they expect that everybody will say that yes sir, bakwas, yes sir, bakwas. if you tell them no no this is real them, what no, you are no. talking is bakwas they don't know what to say <laughs> so what was the question exactly the about and no, they wanted to know that uh, yeah this question uh, said one one about the Shetra Palakas and then they talked about why is it in some places that the uh, Naga Devatas are chosen as uh, Kshetra Palakas and what is the significance of the Naga Devatas as uh, Kshetra Palakas something like that is Kshetra Palaka of a date of, of a particular why should a Naga Devata not be chosen ah, as a ah, why should yeah that's all. why should it not be is the answer i mean so yeah. but that's the question that uh, why is it uh, uh, why are naga devatas chosen as uh, no it's please, nothing please. is chosen these are these things don't nothing happen based yeah. on okay i will now you know take a list and choose ki ye naam mujhe lag raha hai, ye mera <laughs> this business doesn't work that way 
the shift pala of a specific place happens due to various reasons in the past which you me most of us have no idea about because we were not even there okay so it's like the presence of the deity manifests there and there is shift pala there and all in a in a in one scheme of uh, recognition all the Kshetrapalas, they have their realms and all that. All of them finally report to Bhairava. He is the ultimate of the Kshetrapalas. He is the master of all Kshetrapalas. And even the Bhairavas, Bhairava himself has various kramas. There are 52 Bhairavas and then there will be Mahakal Bhairava and this, that. Uh, Ashta Bhairavas, Vatuka Bhairava, Mahakal Bhairava, etc. All the kramas are there. So all Kshetrapalas, somewhere or the other, are connected to Bhairava's energy. He is the master in terms of protecting an area. That's about And Kshetrapala Puja is fundamental. Like... Even any even simple pujas also you do, you have to give a Shetrapala puja. And, and and the best part is the minimum thing that you have to do is Shetrapala, what is called as a bali. And that need not be actually an animal sacrifice, by the way. It's not a pashu bali always. But jo bhog that is given to Shetrapala is also considered as a bhog, also as a bali, as a by the way. In fact, the simplest procedure, any, and I'm talking specifically from the tantric perspective because that is what my experience is more. So, four deities without worship of four basic, it does not matter whom you're actually worshipping. You could be worshipping any of the Mahavidyas, you could be worshipping uh, any, uh, you could be worshipping Durga, you could be worshipping, uh, uh, you know, Chipur Sundari, etc., anybody. Four deities are fundamentally to be worshipped before even the worship starts. One is Ganpati has to be given something, Vatuka Bhairava has to be given something, Yoginis have to be given something, and Shetrapala has to be given. Unless you are giving bhog to these four, and by the way, only mantras are not enough. Only mantras and internally meditating se kuch hone wala hai. You have to give something to eat, something like we consume, something physical has to be given. Okay, and then even there, there are specifications of bhoga, what has to be offered, what flowers have to be offered, etc. And there are specific places where these bhogas have to be kept. And then they are told that, okay, this is for the Kshetrapala. And if you, there are two traditions after this, giving to the Kshetrapala, turn around, come back. Don't even why this decision is because the Kshetrapala is always fierce. Most of the average people, if suddenly the Kshetrapala were to appear in front, you saw what happened in the last 20 minutes of the movie, right? So people don't have the, uh, you know, normal people doing normal puja cannot take the appearance of the Kshetrapala. One is that. And uh, there is the other 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 way in which it is done. That Kshetrapala bhog, and this bhog is called a bali by the way, remember this. Very interesting. Why this specific term is chosen? It is not called a naivendam and this and that. Number two, the bhoga given to Shetrapala cannot be consumed as prasad. So you give it to Shetrapala. Uh, anything that you give to Shetrapala cannot be used by the way. And then you uh, offer it to Shetrapala and you keep it there. And if there is any animal that comes and consumes it organically, any animal, be it a cow, be it a dog, be it anything else, not even consumes. If it comes there so much as smells the offering, from that you will get to understand whether the ritual will succeed, not succeed, if there is in Bahaya, this, that, everything. For expert ritual is this. Without Shetrapala Puja, no worship is possible. This is like the primary. We are not even talking about which the primary ritual should be being done. Jumiho. These basics have to be done. Absolutely. I think uh, even in the, uh, for example, you know, people were speaking about uh, Shankara being a Dvaitin and not even in his own, uh, what he has instituted, the Panchayatana or Shanmata. Yes. Uh, you cannot end the puja without offering uh, this one to Bana, Ravana, Chandikesha and Dandi. Yes. Yes. You know, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. No, not just a few few days ago, I was doing a year in Kashi, and there were a couple of uh, people who had come. So one of them was very interesting, he was mentioning this. So Shankaracharya of Sharada, uh, he had gone somewhere and he was traveling, and many hours of travel involved. So he finally reached... Your voice uh, seems city. to be a little... Uh, breaking up a little bit. Are you able to hear? Hello? Voice is breaking up. Yeah, it is a little... It's breaking a little... Hello. Your your image is freezing and your voice is breaking. Maybe just shut off the image. Shut off the image. The yeah. Is it? Is it? Uh, are you here clearly? Yeah. Now it's better. Yeah, it's better. Okay. I'm not sure what is the issue here. Uh, anyway, so so he was telling me about an incident where the Shankaracharya had traveled. 
and he finally reached his destination almost at 12 one at night. And at that time, he sat down and completed the Puja of Chandravaleshwar Shilas every day. This is a verse. This is the when a more Advaitin you lead apart from the Shankaracharya himself. Okay? So you cannot claim that you are a better Advaitin or you have a better understanding of the doctrines or theology or the or the you know texts of Advaita than the Shankaracharya. So this so the Shankaracharya himself, even after passing through so much of he was traveling somewhere, etc., he reaches at midnight and then he sits for the puja without making any compromise in any of the steps of the puja. I think it takes about an hour or more an hour from perhaps you know. So, this is how it is at any given point, uh, even if there is a doctrine of non belief that is there at any sampradaya, not just Advaita, I mean, even the Kashmir sampradaya, others, at the fundamental level, at the ritual level, the worship always involves multiple days, is always steps, those are non negotiable. That is how it is. This is what the culture is. This is exactly what all polytheistic cultures were. And, are, and they will never into your state that okay, I worship Shiva or I worship, uh, so I will not worship anybody, so I don't look at Gandhi and who is it. In the Vaishnava system, they have involved their own uh, representatives in these you know, various states, which means states in the various domains which, which specific deities to be worshipped. So even there also, when the ritualistic worship is done, all this come into play. It's not that there is only one, and I'm talking. Not of the normal bhakti. Normal bhakti is you go to the temple, you bow your hand and all that is fine. When you're actually doing the karma and these things will come into play. So uh, it is perfectly all this worship of the Shetramala or worship of the yoginis or worship of any of these other this is a fundamental part. Or uh, you know, if there is a specific sampradaya, somebody follows and that is its own uh, sequence of deities that you have to worship. You have to worship that. That is how it is. Yeah, let me, uh, it's one hour 45 minutes, so let me, see, it's very good, RRR, Kartikya, Kantara, there's a whole Dharmic Renaissance, politics is downstream from culture, at least mm. the movies we are getting, we are getting some traction, but you know, don't leave it to other people, first of all, you be a living walking, talking example of a proud and confident Hindu, just like Rishabh Shetty is. Don't outsource it to Rishabh. Don't outsource it to Ramesh Rishri or me. You yourself be an example of a proud Hindu. And you know, for that, you need to do your sadhana. You need to educate yourself about your religion. You need to not be apologetic about your religion. You need to understand that rituals are methods created by rishis to access the divine and to get the divine to help. Yes. You know, you need all these, uh, you need all these uh, uh, positive things, you know, like the education system is still compromised, the judiciary is still compromised, the government is compromised. We are not doing well, but since uh, movies in one sense are the collective unconscious of India, if the change is happening with the movies, then perhaps the change is going to happen in the largest, largest society. Mm -hmm. If so, the archetypes are activating in the movies, perhaps it will activate in the larger society. But for that, all of us need to be uh, firm about these matters. All of us need to develop Shakti. All of us need to develop uh, pride in our culture and our religion, our practice. And we should not be trying to show down other people. You know, This whole notion of this is superstition is such an adharmic thing to say. You know, to say that a, a, a puja like this or a ritual like this is superstitious, primitive, backward, it is such an adharmic thing to say. It is such a horrible thing to say. Somebody, I, I forget who was mentioning this, that the, his sole test for whether a person is deracinated or not is whether they like Kantara or not. <laughs> if they like Kantara, <laughs> if they like Kantara, fine. If they don't like Kantara, then okay, Gya Kam Se. So I'm saying, yes, thank God, 2022, something has happened. Something phenomenal has happened. The movies have changed. So, you know, let us now build on this. Let us, you know, apna shakti badao, apna... And most of all, please don't be ashamed of using the word ritual. Puja yes. Paddhi is not something to be ashamed of. Puja Paddhi is something to be proud of. It is one of the greatest achievements of Bharatiya culture. Yes. Our consciousness ke greatest achievements may have. We have created methodologies to access the divine. That is what a puja paddhati is. 
please do not uh, please do not uh, you know like uh, downgrade that and say it is not important it is central it is why central you cannot have our religion without the devas and the puja paddhis for the devas do not True. imagine that some kind of foolish religion like that will ever come to be i know there are people trying to create that religion but that religion will go like dust so that's that's my whole uh, my whole uh, that's that's i would say that would be my last word and no that's rishabh shetty you know all our gods may all our gods bless him and may continue to make such awesome movies um <laughs> no no i i i oh he's gone he lost him we lost him yeah. his connection yeah, was a good I yeah his connection was a little iffy because of yeah. yeah i think this is a good point at which to take uh, i think to wind this down or, okay uh, yeah yeah so, yeah okay so i think that's long enough it's been 1 to 1 hour 15 minutes 1 hour 15 minutes yeah sarvam shyamam thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you rajesh as well i'll message him separately thank you Thank you everyone for joining us. Bye.